guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dawn Yell and I am the owner of Damn Fancy Creations. If you guys are new to my channel, I do wanna let you know that you can catch my content in two other places. I have a large tutorial group on Facebook as well as a smaller, more personal Patreon group where I offer free digital files, exclusive discount codes, exclusive content, and fun group challenges each month. I'm going to link both of those groups in the description below in case you guys wanna check those out. Before we get started on our tutorial today, I do wanna give a shout out to one of my new patrons. Her name is Selena. We have chatted a few times and she is super sweet. She is just starting out on her Tumblr journey, so I'm going to link her info in the description below. If you guys could go follow her and show her some love and support on her Tumblr journey, that would be amazing. For today's tutorial, I've been wanting to share this with you guys for a while, but these cups were part of my winter Christmas mystery boxes, and I did not want to put my tutorial up without the recipients receiving their cup yet, because these cups were something that I had never done before. I wanted the um, recipients to be surprised when they opened them. Um, this cup has a lot of different techniques on it, and I like tutorials like this because I know a lot of times when we look at a tumbler that has a lot of different techniques on it in our head, we just think that is way too much stuff for me. I cannot tackle all of that. But this is why I like to make tutorials for you guys. I try to break things down into smaller sections. So by the end of the tutorial, you guys feel more comfortable about tackling a cup that has a lot of different techniques in it. Um, so this one is one of my favorite Christmas cups that I've made so far and I'm excited for you guys to watch it. So if you guys are ready to see how I created this falling snow tumbler, let's get started. Alright guys, so to base coat these cups, I did spray paint them white, but I am going to use dispersion colors to actually put the base color on. I know that spray paint is getting kind of hard to find right now, so I'm trying to find some other ways to kind of paint my bases different colors um, just in case I cannot find certain colors that I want. So this one is already completed. I just mixed some hot pink and basically coral together. Um, just to create kind of a bright sunset feel. Um, I just applied the dispersion colors with a paddle brush that I have. So I'm going to be using Poppin' Pink and Peach, and then Tsunami and Sky Blue. I did two different versions of this cup. I'm doing kind of a hot pink to light pink version, and then a darker blue to light blue. And I am basically just going to pour my dispersion colors on to my tumbler. I am literally just taking a few drops at a time. I did mix some dispersion colors with some Floetrol, um, which did help it go on smoothly, but it did make it a little more translucent, which I didn't want because I wasn't trying to do five coats on my tumbler. So I just decided to add a few drops to my cup and that worked out fine. I also have prime time and I should have tried adding some dispersion colors to prime time as well, but you know, you live and learn. <laughs> I do these tutorials so I can think of things I should have done and let you guys know. <laughs> so for starters, I am just doing the coral color first. I do um, two coats of each color, which also helps kind of with the ombre or the little gradient effect that I was going for. I did want the tops half of my tumblers to be a little bit more brighter than the bottom half. And just adding a lighter color on the bottom half of the tumbler did help with that. And I am not painting the bottoms of my tumblers because those are not going to have glitter on them or anything like that, at least not for the first few steps. So leaving it white was acceptable. So I did run to 
my bathroom and dry these cups with my hair dryer really quick just to kind of help speed up this process a little bit. So once this is completely dry, I'm going to add another layer of this coral color. We're just going to smooth it onto the cup. So this is pretty good coverage with two coats of the dispersion color. And now I'm done with the coral for now. So I'm going to apply the hot pink for the top. And since I am doing just a gradient effect, I am just going to use the same brush and not wash it out. Um, I am going to apply the pink with the opposite side of the paddle brush though. And this poppin' pink is a little more thick than the peach. And for the first coat, I am just going around the top edge just to get that color on there. And then during the second coat, I'm going to kind of bring it down into the peach. So I'm going to set this aside and let it dry. And now we're going to do the same thing for the second cup. So this pink was pretty dry. So this pink has actually been mixed with a little bit of Floetrol. And since the first layer of this pink was already pretty opaque, I did not need a, you know, a thick, thick amount of the dispersion color. So I just poured a little bit of the thinner Poppin' Pink. And you guys can see I'm literally just putting one drop at a time and just kind of bringing it down a little bit. And then I start to just kind of move it down the cup a little bit. And when I was making these cups, since I was going to be adding an opal glitter, I wasn't too concerned about the gradient being perfect. I just wanted to get a couple, just two colors on the cup, just to give it a little bit of interest when the um, glitter was applied. So it just made for a little bit of variation. Ooh. 
and if you do get too much um, color on your brush I'm just dabbing it off on this paper towel So once I get the bottom kind of the color that I wanted, I am just bringing the more opaque pink just kind of down the cup, just so it's a little bit of a smoother transition. So I really like how this one turned out. You guys can see that there are different colors on there. Um, I did want the top just a little bit brighter in some areas where it had a little bit too much coral. So I just went back and added some more hot pink and just kind of brought that down the cup. So I was really happy with this color combination. It's kind of hard to see the color transition in the video, but it does have some spots of coral, some of hot pink, just to give it the kind of the appearance of a a bright sunset <laughs> so we're doing the same thing with the other cup we're just applying some of that thinner hot pink mixture you can get a large container of Floetrol at Lowe's or Home Depot the one that I have I have probably had for years so it doesn't, I don't know if it goes bad or not, but I've never had issues with my Floetrol. I think it's about $15 and it's about a gallon, I believe. So this one was a little bit more difficult to kind of blend those areas just because of the curve of the cup. But I made it work, y'all. So again, I am just blending those colors together just to create a fun two-toned cup where some parts are brighter, some parts are lighter. And yes, my hands are covered in dispersion colors, but it is what it is. I don't think there's ever a time where my hands do not have paint on them. I know I could wear gloves, but gloves are super hard to find still right now. So I can always just wash my hands. So before I start doing my blue cups I will wash out my paintbrush really really well um, because I do want my cup to be pretty blue I don't want it to mix with the pink and make purple colors This one and tsunami I use for my resin beach art I think they're just super pretty together 
and we are doing the same thing for both of these cups that we did for the first one we're going to do one layer of the lighter color on the bottom and let that dry And then I am going to run and dry these with my hair dryer. And then I am going to come back and do another layer. And I do dry them because you guys can see in this frame right here that once dried the dispersion colors, you can really see the bare spots. So you want to make sure that you get good coverage. I'm sure if I probably mixed these in with prime time, the coverage would have been a little bit better, but it was just something that I did not even think of at the time. And I know that a lot of you guys don't have prime time. Um, so this is also just another way to show you that you can do it without prime time if you need to. This one came out a little bit too quick, but we made it work. For some reason, my sky blue dispersion color is always super liquidy. The neons are usually pretty thick. I don't know if it's because of the pigments that are used, but. So now we're going to use Tsunami, which is the kind of like a darker teal blue it's really pretty um i think this is the middle color that i use for my beach work but again we're just starting with one drop so somebody called me during this video and my video cut out but we're basically going to do the same thing for these two cups as we did for the pink and peach colored cups and once they are dry, we will be ready to apply our glitter. So now that all of these cups are dried, we are going to apply our glitter. I am using the epoxy method to apply this glitter. Typically when I create ombres, gradients, or just have different colors on my cup, I will use the epoxy method because I feel like it helps the glitter lay flatter and helps all of those different colors to shine through. So we are just applying a thin layer of epoxy. Um, I typically mix enough for several different cups. You guys can see that I have other cups on this turner right now. But, and I also use more epoxy than most people suggest when doing the epoxy method, but that's only because I like my glitter to really get soaked up by that epoxy because I prefer the appearance that way. Um, if you want your glitter to kind of have more texture and sit on top of the epoxy, then you need to use less epoxy. I hope that makes sense for you guys. And I know you guys can see on my last little cup, I had a spot that was all peach. I don't even know what happened, um, <laughs> but it ended up not even being a problem. I just think the glitter that was applied helped cover up that imperfection. So after we have our epoxy on, we're going to pop all of our bubbles with our torch 
It is not necessarily imperative that you pop bubbles during this step, but if you have any bubbles around the seam, then that can cause the glitter to kind of bubble up and we do not want that. And for this step, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I did not even glitter the bottom of my cups because there's no glitter that's going to go on there. So I figured why not just leave them blank for now until I need to epoxy them. That way the bottom doesn't have um, several layers of epoxy on it that could possibly make it a little uneven because we are gonna go back and glitter the bottoms in another step. So I did notice a few spots that I missed epoxy on. I'm not sure why, but I just went and touched it back up with my popsicle stick. So I'm going to be using coconut snowball martini and my tea strainer, which I use in almost every video. And we are just going to tap the glitter onto the cup. So right away, you guys can see how flat the glitter is laying because it is getting soaked up by that epoxy, which is the look that I was going for. If you use a thinner coat of epoxy, then the glitter will kind of sit on top of the epoxy. It's just a different look. So we are just going to do this for all of our cups. Right, guys so I'm just speeding this up a little bit for y'all I am just applying my glitter making sure everything is covered really well And then once this epoxy has dried, we are going to go back and apply two more layers of epoxy and just make sure everything is good and smooth. I am just going back and touching up some spots that may be a little bit bare. All right, so once our tumblers have been epoxied, they're going to be pretty smooth. I went ahead and sanded my rim. I do not sand the body um, just because I have found that if you sand and then do power wash, you can sometimes see the scratch marks or sand marks through the spray paint. So I just try to get it as smooth as possible. I'm using the Dawn Power Wash Spray and Flat White Rust-Oleum Paint. And I just have a bucket of water. Um, no need to get a hose or a bucket or anything. So I find that if I shake up my power wash, it produces more suds, which is what I like. I always do a test spray just to make sure everything is spraying out how I want it to. And I am just going to spray the top part 
and then lightly on the middle part. So for the Dawn Power Wash Spray, wherever you spray your soap, the spray paint will not touch. It's kind of like a crayon resist drawing. So I don't want a lot of paint on the middle or the bottom, so I am being a little bit more heavy handed on the middle towards the bottom. So once I have my soap on there, I am going to take my spray paint, give a test spray, and we're going to spray the top pretty heavily, not to where it's dripping, but just so it's covered well. And then we're just going to mist the bottom and the middle. So that way the snow effect is a little lighter. And then we're going to immediately pour the water over the cup to get all that soap off of there. And I love how this turned out. So it looks like the snow is heavily falling towards the top and then gets lighter as it goes towards the bottom, like it was melting or fading. But I really love how this turned out. I was really happy with it. So I'm going to show you guys one more. I'm going to show you guys the pink one. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. I sanded my rims, not the body. And we're going to take our power wash and spray lightly on the top and more heavy towards the bottom. So it's kind of the opposite with the spray paint. With the spray paint, we spray a little more heavy on the top and lighter on the bottom. And the power wash, we spray lighter on the top and heavy on the bottom. So I just typically use quick back and forth motions. Um, I do hold my spray paint probably about six to eight inches away from the cup because I don't want any drips. And then we're going to immediately pour that water over the tumbler. And I was really happy with how this one turned out. And the good thing about power wash spray is if you mess up, it's just paint and you can wipe it off with alcohol or acetone. So after the power wash dries, I do not epoxy, it's just spray paint. Um, so I'm going to apply our little town decals and our moon. Um, now I just measured around my tumbler for how um, long I needed to make these town and tree decals. Every cup is going to be different. Um, and I would measure after you epoxy because if you epoxy, it's going to add a little thickness to the tumbler and you will need to make your decals a little bit longer as if you were applying them to a regular plain stainless cup. And I opted not to use transfer tape for this. Um, like the skinny tumblers, I probably could have used transfer tape. But for the curved tumblers, I don't think that would be possible because you would not be able to get it to lay flat. So I basically just cut my decals into sections and applied them one at a time. Now these do have like little tiny windows in them. And instead of weeding every little tiny square, I just lifted up the decal and then pressed my fingers to the back of the decals and the tiny windows came out with them. You guys can see that in the video. I have little tiny vinyl pieces all over my hands. The ones that would not come off, I did go back and remove with the CC DIY tweezers that I have. So we're just smoothing each little section down. Okay. 
And I am not concerned with the section of the tumbler beneath the town because I am going to go back and add glitter that is an opaque glitter. I thought about spray painting the bottom white instead of doing glitter, but I just thought that the glitter would add just a little bit more sparkle to it. So I decided to go with glitter. So I have my next section of the little town and I'm just matching it up. And I will also tell you guys that um, not to stress about getting these perfectly smooth. For some reason, white and black vinyl tend to smooth itself out underneath epoxy. So if you have a wrinkle in your white or black vinyl, you will not be able to see it under epoxy. Now, if it was metallic or holographic or metal vinyl, you definitely could not get away with that. I don't know why white and black vinyl have that effect. But the epoxy just kind of helps smooth everything out. Obviously, I do try to get them as smooth as possible, but since I've done this before and I know that the vinyl smooths itself out, I wasn't super anal about it. Um, so where the vinyl overlaps, if it overlaps a lot, I will just kind of cut that section off, but this one wasn't really that bad. Um, this little tree had a larger wrinkle in it than I wanted. You guys can even see it in the video. So I did just kind of lightly lift it up with my blade. And I will also point out that I did not really push down the vinyl or really smooth it down to the cup until I got all of my decals on there. So I did have to lift up these trees a little bit and kind of reposition them so those larger wrinkles would go away. So I was just making sure that everything was pressed down really well. I don't want it lifting under epoxy. And I did decide to go ahead and get all of these little vinyl pieces out. I could not find my tweezers at first, so I just had to use my old tool that I used to use for this kind of stuff. <laughs> but I'm just digging out all of those little tiny pieces that would not come off. And this little town scene did have a lot of tiny pieces. I really like how they look, but there were tons of little windows and doors that I had to kind of dig out of the vinyl. 
so I am just going to speed this part up for you guys. I am going to show you guys how I do the pink one really quick, just in case you guys need to see me apply the vinyl in sections again. And the whole reason why I did this in sections was because if I tried to wrap the bottom with just the vinyl wrap, it would curve and crease and all of that kind of stuff. So I just, you know, found that this was the easiest way for me to do it. So I typically will just cut it in threes, either a house and two trees, three trees, two houses and a tree. I felt like that was the easiest way to apply them. I'm trying to get all the little windows out <laughs> so I don't have to dig them out with my tool. And this one, I did cut this little tree. And I put him in between these two houses because again, you're not going to be able to see the creases or overlaps under epoxy. And again, since the bottom is going to be glittered, I am not really concerned about how even the lines are. I can sprinkle my glitter to where it covers all of those little seams. So once we have our houses on there, I'm going to apply our moon. I just cut out some circles for my larger cups, the 30 ounces or the skinnies. I believe I did about three inches. It may have been two and a half. Um, I just kind of measured my cups to see kind of how large I wanted them. And I am smoothing them out as best I can. It is kind of hard to get something round to lay on a surface that is curved. Um, but I am just kind of slowly mashing those air bubbles out or those little creases. I usually start from the center and drag the air outwards. For the skinny cups, it's a lot easier to get the moon to lay flat. And I kind of picked where I wanted my moon for each cup. If my cup had a church on it, like this one, I put the moon kind of directly above the church. Um, the other ones, I just kind of placed it around the houses or trees. So I'm going to be using the gray Bria Reese ink. And this is how I'm going to make my moon a little bit realistic. I'm just getting a smaller stipple brush and I'm just going to kind of dot the ink on one side of the moon. and then slowly bring that ink to the other side. I do want one side to be a little bit heavier with the ink, just to kind of give it that more realistic feel. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other one, and then I will show you how I go back and add a little bit more detail to the moon. So 
So once I get my ink on there, I am going to take some alcohol and we're going to detail it a little bit. Now, when we do this step, I do not put a lot of alcohol at all. I just kind of get a little bit on my brush and then dab my brush off. So it's just, just enough alcohol to kind of cause the ink to separate a little bit. And this will help push the ink together. Um, it will also help to kind of cause, you know, the appearance of craters in the moon. So we're just stippling, applying ink, applying alcohol, basically until you get it to look how you want it to. And don't overthink this step, it's just a moon. So now we're going to apply Santa going across the moon. So I'm just getting my transfer tape and my little reindeers, they were kind of hard to weed. So this guy's little antler came off. <laughs> so I'm just going to put him going directly across the moon. So I'm really happy with how this tumbler is turning out so far. So after this one is done, we're going to do the pink one. I had about eight of these to do, um, but I'm just showing you guys one of each color. I just really like the contrast of the silhouette of Santa and his reindeer against the white and then bright background. I think it's turned out really cool. So once these are complete, we are going to epoxy them and apply the glitter that's going to go on the bottom of the tumblers. Um, I will tell you guys that this particular vinyl, even though I really like it, it was a little hard to weed these tiny, tiny little pieces. Um, so I did have like a couple of the reindeer legs kind of stick to the vinyl when I was weeding it, but um, it's pretty tough vinyl. So I was able to go back and peel off the little tiny legs and stick them on. So I'm really happy with how these cups are turning out. And now it's time to apply the glitter. All right, so we are putting them back on the turners. And we're going to put another layer of epoxy on these cups. And then sprinkle on the glitter. You guys can already see that I have a couple of them already glittered. Um, I did already epoxy since I showed you guys how I epoxy earlier. I just wanted to show you guys how I glittered this part. So 
So I am just taking my glitter and just sprinkling it right against the edge of the vinyl just to make sure that that area is covered really good. And then obviously we're going to get the bottom this time. Sorry, my head is in the way. And then once we get that glitter on there, I'm just taking a little bit of these glitter flakes and we're just sprinkling them above that line just so the glitter doesn't have such a sharp line to it, just kind of like it's gradiently coming down. Um, and this glitter does have some extra fine pieces in it. So I did scoop some up in my tea strainer and just sprinkled some right along the line where the glitter meets that vinyl just to help with that little gradient effect. That way you don't have such a harsh line for your glitter. If you want that, then that's definitely how you can do it, but I just prefer to have mine a little bit more, um, not as straight. So I will show you guys how I do this other one. So again, we're just sprinkling this glitter from the vinyl down to the bottom of the cup and I also will point out that if you are using a more translucent glitter you may want to paint the bottom white so you don't see that color through your glitter um, I could see mine a little bit through it but I actually liked that um, because it kind of gave the effect of the sky color reflecting off of the snow I could only see just a little bit through the glitter, but I really liked that effect. So if that's something that you like, then you may not want to paint the bottom of your cup. So again, I'm just taking a little bit of glitter and sprinkling it right along that line just to help with the gradient effect. And then going back with my tea strainer and sprinkling some of that extra fine glitter right where the glitter meets the vinyl. Now I will epoxy two more times and then I am going to sand everything really well. I am going to sand the edges of my cup and the bottom. I'm going to start with a 60-80 grit sanding block. My sanding blocks do kind of wear out pretty quickly. So I get the 60-80 grit sandpaper and then basically just wrap it around my block because I like having the block in my hand better. And I do get the wet dry sandpaper. It does last a lot longer. I can use the same piece of paper multiple times. So I'm basically gonna hold my sanding block at an angle. And we're just going to sand around the entire cup. We're just exposing some of that stainless so when we apply our final layer of epoxy, we are 100% sure that everything is sealed in really well and that our, our rims are really smooth. So I'm going to dry this off really quick and show you guys the exposed stainless. You guys can see it's literally one or two millimeters. It's not enough that's going to affect the design of your cup. So now I'm going to sand the bottom edge 
And this cup does have two layers of epoxy um, over this glitter. I don't sand if it's just one layer. So I'm using the same 60, 80 grit sandpaper, but you guys can see that I'm not really pushing down on the sandpaper. I'm just lightly kind of dulling any of those sharp glitter pieces that are sticking through. If I sand too much with the 60 or 80 grit, then it's going to basically sand down the glitter and that's not what I want. You guys can see my little corgi birdie over there. She always has to be around me, sniffing for something, I don't know. My old man Mo is probably sleeping on his bed. So after I get all of those sharp little glitter pieces off, I am going to go back with a different sanding sponge that I will show you guys. So this is the sanding sponge that I will typically use. And I can be a little bit more rougher with this one. I know that it's not going to sand down my glitter too much. So this is what I use to really get my rims really smooth. We are not going to feel any glitter grains. Um, before your final layer of epoxy, you want your cup to be as smooth as possible. So you guys can see I'm basically just going to town on the bottom of this cup. <laughs> but I would not try this if you don't know how your sanding block or your sanding sponge is going to react. I just know because I've used the same sponge for probably a year. Um, it's just a sanding sponge. I don't even know what grit it is. It's one that I've had forever. It's just what I use to kind of smooth everything out. And then this one is very, very smooth, 400, 600 grit. And this is also what I use to really just kind of buff the bottom of my tumbler just to make sure it is extra smooth. I'm not going to have any type of pricklies kind of sticking up. And then I will wash my cup really good with Dawn and dry it really good. And then I will put it on my turner for the final layer of epoxy. And that is basically it for this tutorial. So I will show you guys some finished pictures of these tumblers that I made. I did make one that is going to be in my ready to ship sale that is all white and silver. And I think it is so pretty. It's very classy. So I may do a couple more of the all silver or white and silver ones. Um, but I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think they were so fun and just kind of a different take on the Christmas tumbler and also um, just a new way to use the Dawn Power Wash that I had not seen before. I definitely think it gives that falling snow effect. And I love Christmas, so I am all about Christmas tumblers. So let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions. Which color was your favorite? And if you do decide to make one of these, please post them in my tutorial group. I would love to check out what you guys create.
If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook or my Patreon group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.